Introducing Robin and the Seven Hoods, a 1964 film that takes you on a ride through the glitzy underbelly of Chicago's mob scene. Ever wondered about the quirky, shocking, or heart-wrenching facts surrounding this classic? Well, keep your eyes peeled as we unravel the mysteries. Have you stumbled upon any lesser-known anecdotes about this film that piqued your interest? Or perhaps recall the first time you got a taste of the Hoods world? Brace yourself because there's a roller coaster of funny, shocking, and sad facts waiting for you. Now, let's dive into your memories. What's your most cherished experience with this movie? We're eager to hear your stories and reflections in the comments below. Don't hold back, your tales could be as intriguing as the movie itself. Stay tuned for more insights and anecdotes about Robin and the Seven Hoods. The more you watch, the more surprises await. Share your thoughts and memories, we're all ears. In the bustling world of 1960s cinema, a captivating gem emerged that left an indelible mark on the entertainment landscape. Directed by Gordon Douglas, this film seamlessly blended crime, comedy, and musical elements into a delightful tapestry of storytelling. Set against the backdrop of the Prohibition era in Chicago, it offered a unique perspective on the gangster genre, infusing it with the vibrancy of a musical. This innovative approach, coupled with a stellar cast, elevated it to a special place in the annals of cinematic history. The narrative follows a group of charismatic rogues led by the charming Rabo, portrayed by the iconic Frank Sinatra. His magnetic presence, coupled with the seamless ensemble cast, including Dean Martin and Sammy Davis Jr., breathed life into the characters and added an intriguing layer of complexity to the storyline. The camaraderie between the Seven Hoods, each with their own quirks and talents, created a dynamic and entertaining experience. The film not only showcased the prowess of the actors, but also featured a remarkable soundtrack that resonated with the spirit of the 1960s. The musical numbers, composed by Jimmy Van Heusen and Sammy Kahn, added an intricate layer to the storytelling, making it a memorable and enduring piece of cinematic art. This classic stands as a testament to the creativity and innovation that characterized the era. It was a departure from the traditional gangster narrative, offering audiences a fresh and captivating experience that has etched itself into the history of film. The movie's contribution to the entertainment landscape is cherished, and its legacy continues to captivate new generations. In the world of 1960s cinema, it remains a captivating and enduring classic celebrated for its unique blend of genres, unforgettable characters, and timeless musicality. It is a true gem that has left an indelible mark on the landscape of entertainment, reminding us of the remarkable talents that graced the silver screen during that vibrant era. Robin and the Seven Hoods, a classic film from 1964, holds several memorable moments that showcase the charm and wit of its characters. One standout episode involves a spirited musical number set in a vibrant nightclub. The atmosphere is lively, with upbeat tunes echoing through the air as the characters, impeccably dressed in stylish suits, showcase their dance moves. The sequence is not only a testament to the film's entertainment value, but also a reflection of the era's glamorous nightlife. Another noteworthy moment occurs during a tense confrontation between the main characters. The dimly lit room creates a sense of intrigue as the characters exchange sharp dialogue, emphasizing the complexity of their relationships. The scene is masterfully crafted, drawing viewers into the emotional depth of the narrative. One particularly captivating episode involves a high-stakes heist that adds an element of suspense to the storyline. The meticulous planning and execution of the heist are portrayed with meticulous detail, keeping the audience on the edge of their seats. The clever twists and turns in this plotline showcase the film's ability to blend genres seamlessly. A humorous and memorable moment unfolds as the characters find themselves in a slapstick situation. The comedic timing and chemistry among the cast members shine through, providing a lighthearted break in the midst of the film's more dramatic elements. This scene not only adds levity to the narrative, but also highlights the versatility of the cast in delivering both humor and drama. In the world of Robin and the Seven Hoods, these standout episodes contribute to the film's enduring appeal. The carefully crafted moments, whether filled with music, tension, suspense, or humor, collectively create a rich tapestry that resonates with audiences. Each scene is intricately etched into the film's legacy, showcasing the remarkable prowess of the cast and the director in bringing this captivating story to life.
In the 1964 film Robin and the Seven Hoods, lesser-known Rat Packers Joey Bishop and Peter Lawford are notably absent. Instead, Peter Falk and Bing Crosby step into their roles seamlessly. While the credits may not acknowledge him, the distinct voice of the radio announcer heard outside the radio supply store is unmistakably Paul Fries. When Alan Dale is introduced to Robbo, a hood played by Crosby's son, Philip Crosby, tells him to take a seat, earning a sidelong glance from Bing. These subtle nuances add layers to the film with familial connections and vocal talents woven into the narrative seamlessly. In this unconventional lineup of Rat Pack members, the absence of Bishop and Lawford is overshadowed would by the seamless integration of Falk and Crosby. The film's attention to detail extends beyond the credits with Paul Free's voice adding an extra layer of authenticity to the radio scenes. Moreover, the inclusion of Philip Crosby as a hood adds a touch of family dynamics to the characters. In summary, Robin and the Seven Hoods showcases a unique assembly of Rat Packers with Falk and Crosby stepping into their roles effortlessly. The film's attention to detail, from casting choices to familial connections, enriches the viewing experience, offering an intriguing perspective on the Rat Pack era. In the 1964 film Robin and the Seven Hoods, Sammy Davis Jr. pays homage to James Cagney with a spot on imitation, referencing a line from the 1931 movie Taxi. Notably, Cagney's famous words come out and take it, you dirty, yellow-bellied rat, often misquoted as you dirty rat, find a place in Davis's performance. This nod coincides with the impending end of Prohibition, a historical backdrop to the film. Adding a historical note, Robin and the Seven Hoods marks Bing Crosby's final foray into theatrically released musicals. The film encompasses a range of talents, including Tony Basil, known for the hit song Mickey, who takes on a role as one of the dancers. In this cinematic assembly, the film captures Davis's tribute to Cagney, Crosby's musical finale, and the diverse talents involved, including Tony Basil. The nods to the past and the unique blend of performers contribute to the film's distinct charm and historical resonance. In a strategic nod to the legendary meeting between Robin Hood and Little John, Robbo encounters John in a game of pool, wielding long sticks as a subtle homage. The parallel continues with a victory for Little John in both encounters, capturing the essence of the legendary rivalry. Edward G. Robinson makes a pivotal cameo appearance, quietly contributing to the film's depth without formal acknowledgement. His role adds an intriguing layer to the narrative, showcasing the film's attention to hidden nuances. Following the tragic assassination of President John F. Kennedy, Frank Sinatra, deeply affected, expressed regret in the line, you come over like George Washington, I'll send you back like Abe Lincoln. This moment stands as a poignant reflection of Sinatra's lasting remorse. These instances exemplify the film's meticulous incorporation of historical references and subtle nuances, contributing to its unique charm and narrative depth. Such details, from the homage to Robin Hood's encounter to Robinson's uncredited cameo and Sinatra's regretful line, enrich the viewing experience with a blend of homage and historical resonance. Frank Sinatra's distinctive dark green fedora hat in the film nods to the iconic green cap associated with Robin Hood. His green jacket and vest during the trial, though more stylish than the green long johns mentioned by Dean Martin, likely reference a silent film portrayal of Robin Hood. Originally, Peter Lawford was slated for a role, but due to a fallout between Frank Sinatra and John F. Kennedy, Lawford, Kennedy's brother-in-law, faced the consequences from Sinatra, leading to his absence in the film. Robert Falk, who appeared as a sheriff in the Rat Pack film Ocean's Eleven, also makes an appearance in Robin and the Seven Hoods. This adds a connection between the two films, showcasing Falk's involvement in the Rat Pack's cinematic ventures. The film pays homage to the legendary meeting of Robin Hood and Little John through a strategic nod in a pool game between characters. This subtle parallel, including the victory for Little John in both encounters, captures the essence of their renowned rivalry. Edward G. Robinson's pivotal cameo appearance adds an intriguing layer to the narrative, contributing to the film's depth without formal acknowledgement. His role serves as another hidden nuance, emphasizing the film's attention to subtle details. In the aftermath of President John F. Kennedy's tragic assassination, Frank Sinatra expresses regret with a poignant line, you come over like George Washington, I'll send you back like Abe Lincoln. This moment reflects Sinatra's enduring remorse and adds a historical touch to the film. 
The inclusion of these details, from Sinatra's nod to Robin Hood's attire to Lawford's absence, and Falk's link between films, showcases the film's meticulous incorporation of references and nuances contributing to its distinct charm and narrative depth. These elements, along with the historical resonance, create a unique viewing experience, emphasizing the film's unconventional approach to storytelling. In this cinematic venture, a subtle nod to the cake shooting scene in Some Like It Hot emerges, acknowledging Edward G. Robinson Jr.'s role in that memorable moment. The irony lies in real life, where Barbara Rush outlived all the main male co-stars. A poignant note adds to the film's historical backdrop on the same day the funeral scene was filmed, President John F. Kennedy, a close friend of Frank Sinatra, faced a tragic assassination. These real-life connections deepen the layers of the narrative, offering an intriguing perspective on the unfolding events. The film, crafted with attention to subtle details, subtly weaves these connections into its fabric, creating a unique viewing experience. From nods to iconic scenes to the unexpected turn of real-world events, Robin and the Seven Hoods stands as a testament to the intertwining of cinema and reality, adding depth to its storytelling.